Welcome everyone to another video and today we're going to take a look at a team featuring Walrein. Um So Walrein got got nerfed at the start of the season. Uh, Skill Sphere instead of being 35 energy now requires 40 energy because before this season Walrein was really broken. I mean it was a very good safe swap. We had almost a perfect coverage with Icicle Sphere and Earthquake and we're gonna take a look at it in the Australic Premier Classic Cup with a triple community day uh, Pokemon team with a double legacy Charizard with Wing Attack and Blast Burn as well as um, Sylveon with Psy Shock at the back so this team is very accessible for anyone who wants to use it but if I say fairly accessible because all of the Pokemons have a legacy move so if you don't have elite TMs you might have trouble trying to use other mons for it but I guess um, if you don't have a Sylveon maybe you can use a Grand Bull instead uh, it has a similar coverage because it also uses charm and it has a fairly low charge of uh, low energy charge moves in crunch and uh, close combat so you can use that but as for the charizard i'm not sure whether there are any alternatives to it unless if you want to use a level 40 hundo talent flame which i guess could work as well but then again it wouldn't work as good against uh, opposing Dragonites, whereas the Charizard can outspam the Dragonite and potentially get shields or switch. So here we have the Crobat as their safe swap, and we man and managed to get them low enough where Walrein can farm down and get loads of energy. Of course, we will have to take this charge move from the Crobat. Most probably, is going to be a Shadow Ball, which it is but we can threaten whatever comes in with a shield and it is the S Cavalier and there are a lot of S Cavaliers that I've met on the lead I think this was the second game in a row that I met S Cavalier in the lead I wasn't paying attention but yeah and here they have Snorlax at the back so what I found out here what I'm gonna do here is that I'm gonna double bait them because that was my only win con wait uh, single bait and then blast burn but because I know that I was a hit on energy I can then go for double blast burn and then here we almost took them out and we can just safely shield and farm down and have enough energy for the S Cavalier because and here they have almost nowhere to go and then we can just um, we wanted to bait there but then again it was a CMP tie whatever SCAF has will not kill us because we found out that they have acid spray earlier on so we can just throw the dragon claw bait which they will shield because of the potential blast burn which is double super effective against S Cavalier they do not want that to hit unfortunately they still have to take it right in the face bye bye S Cavalier good game right there and then we're going on to the next game Surfetch is a bit iffy for this team because it does have access to Brave Bird but considering here it will, they only went up to 5 counters it is only Night Slash and we can just let it go and then they have Ops to Goon at the back which is very problematic I think this is a triple counter team from the looks of it because they have Surfetch in the lead with Ops to Goon at the back of course I of course triple counter team is quite good in that one is a real fighting type whereas the other one is a pseudo fighting type but then again that would mean that they will be very very weak to uh, fairy types like Granbull, like Sylveon if we had that Sylveon in the lead it would have been very advantageous because then we would have gotten their lead and their safe swap out of the way with just our lead Pokemon and then you can see here 
their last month is an S Cavalier and then it's basically game over for us because we just couldn't take out all three months with Sylveon on its own. Sylveon with shields can just charm S Cavalier down but um, it it means that you'll be shields down and you're gonna see later what I mean by that. And then here we have a Gengar on the lead. Gengar is also another problem because it is very spammy. Shed Shadow Claw, Shadow Punch, and Shadow Ball. It also has the potential to get to a Focus Blast, which will one shot the Wall Rain. And we shielded the first one just in case it was a nuke move, Shadow Ball, or Focus Blast, but it was a Shadow Claw. And we just let the next one go, and we can just farm them down here, get loads of energy. And here's another Pokemon which we do not want to see because it can beat our Wall Rain and Charizard. But because they didn't swap out, uh, I mean they didn't swap into Ampharos, that means we could um, just throw uh, the charge moves at Ampharos now and then take both shields and then hope Sylveon can um, charm it down. Although this Ampharos has a lot of energy, I think they already have enough for two thunder punches. And here we hope we could maybe charm them down. But it is going to be tight. Uh, if they do get to another two, I believe. Yeah. Oh, okay. They only needed one more, so I miscounted again. Sorry about that. And I uh, hopefully I can charm them down. But unfortunately, I couldn't. Um. And let's just hope the final Pokemon is something that Charizard can win against. And it is a Swampert. And again, there's nothing we can do here. Uh, good game to the opponent. Next game is Warring versus Venusaur. Um, before this, Warring does win, basically because um, it only takes five Powder Snows to get to each Icicle Spheres, but now it takes six, I believe, to the first one. So it's almost like a, it's just a back and forth CMP all the way. But they decided to swap out to Samurai, which is good for me because then we can align Charizard with the Venusaur and potentially get to a side shock here with Sylveon uh, to throw at the Venusaur later on. But Samurai is super spammy with that Fury Cutter Hydro Cannon combo. I believe it's the second fastest um, Hydro Cannon in the game after Swampert with Mudshot. Mudshot has like 4.5 energy per turn whereas Fury Cutter only has 4. And here they have they brought in their Venusaur again to charge up on energy. We're gonna let go of the first one. We can tank one Sludge Bomb. But because we let Warren, there was a high chance that they were going to uh, throw the Frenzy Plant instead. And then here we bring in our Warren against their Fire Spin Charizard which is worse in the mirror match but we decided to just save that Charizard for Venusaur because it has a better matchup there and since Warren will most probably get out spam anyway by the Venusaur because the Venusaur already has some energy banked up and here is already a good game for the opponent we have two shields they have one and we are dealing neutral damage as opposed to resisted they decided to shield anyway, which I find it is okay. I mean, that's mm, in both ways, they'll still lose even if they shield Charizard or they keep it for Venusaur. And here we shield safely, knowing that they will not get to a Blast Burn to, on their Charizard to kill us. So we can just throw this Blast Burn on their Venusaur to take him out. And then we can just wing attack down their Charizard for the win. And that finishes our first set, I believe. And then this is our second set. We have Typhlosion on the lead. Another core breaker, I believe, to this team. But there are ways around it. But it must be... But it's very dependent on getting the baits right. Like here, we mistimed it. And they got one incinerate through. But they did shield. Which is good for us because now we can hopefully get to another 
um, icicle sphere before the earthquake but they have already thrown the second one so that means they will need three more um, incinerates to get to the blast burn and we are trying to make sure they do not get a sneak in or a free one because that would mean that we will not be able to win it and here they managed to just let it go and we're gonna try to catch the blast burn on the charizard because it is neutral i mean it's resisted sorry as opposed to neutral on wall rain so here we hope to get to the to cmp type with the typhlosion but we couldn't get it uh interesting fact typhlosion and charizard both have the same exact stats but in this scenario um, because my Charizard is rank 6 for Ultra League it will not win the CM it will most probably not win the CMP versus a Typhlosion and they brought in a Gallade here is where Sylveon has time to shine <coughs> and then they brought in their own Sylveon into the mirror we are taking a lot of damage we are trying to swap out because we want to keep it fresh for the Gallade Unfortunately, we have taken half the damage. We try to spam these Icicle Spheres before they can throw a Psy Shock or a Moon Blast at our Warren. But at this health, I thought, you know what? We're going to just try to aggressively go for another Icicle Sphere because we have quite a decent amount of health. And because of that, they have to throw. And I think this is where their mistake comes in. I think they had to commit to the farm down because here I can farm down their Sylveon and have a moon blast ready for the galate and since the galate does not have enough energy i believe they were only on two confusions and this was the third we managed to um seal the deal with a moon blast to galate and here we have a dragonite dragonite has nowhere to go against this team and they swap into empoleon and you know what is going to happen right empoleon switch in they are behind on energy we can say we can tank one and um, potentially two drill packs uh, yeah we can tank two drill packs so we can just go straight earthquake even if they shield we will still out spam them to the third earthquake and here we managed to land it and the opponent immediately quits because they know they have no chance whatsoever because after that we only needed icicle sphere to kill off the empoleon so ggs and here they have a toga kiss and they bring in a wall ring into the mirror um even though this even though wall rain is very advantageous against the toga case because we do deal super effective damage we can still safely stay into this match knowing that we have charizard who can out spam the toga case later on unless of course that's lag the lag killed us here literally you can just see that how after they wanted to throw earthquake uh, it did exponentially a, a ma amount of damage on my wall rain it wasn't supposed to do that much it's supposed to do less than 50 percent and here we freeze for the longest of time and then the next time we actually managed to attack our wall rain is dead so yeah even though the game has gotten better compared to last week where it was totally unplayable but there are still hiccups in the system so i got really frustrated because that time it was a very good lead we still had energy advantage on their switch we could have gotten that in and won that possibly but it's okay the next game they swap into their snorlax we try to throw try to beat the earthquake on them and got a shield and we swap into a charizard because we can tank i think two body slams and we can just throw the blastman to potentially one hit ko their snorlax the um, shadow snorlax is quite frail but we mistimed it underestimated the amount of energy that snorlax had so we had to double shield it and farm all the way up to almost a double blast burn we didn't want to go all the way up to a double blast burn because then we will be wasting quite some amount of energy and here we managed to get another blast burn and but because we but because we are really low on health we couldn't get to the dragon claw and we can come here with wall rain to 
Oh, we didn't farm it down. Yeah, I think it makes sense that we couldn't farm it down because we don't want to get debuffed by the um, Poison Fang because Snorlax, I believe, has energy as well. And here we want to see whether or not the Snorlax will come back in. It does, and we swap in and they stayed into their Snorlax. Which tells me that most probably they are weak in the back to, to Sylveon. Most probably is a Dragonite. And is it a Dragonite? No, it's a Walrein. So if we can get a Moonblast on this Walrein, that means our Walrein will win. And because they try to over farm to compensate for being behind on energy, they did not count the amount of um, fast move that we had put in and hence the energy that we had. And here they they took a few more charms in and it's within range where we can just go for an Icicle Sphere and the Icicle Sphere will most probably KO if not just needs one or two more Icicle Spheres yep it KOs and that is the end of that battle GG's and I believe this is the last one another good lead against Crobat another safe sword against Snorlax wow there's so many people who are running Crobat leads with Snorlax safe swaps but then again, it does make sense. Um, Crobat is weak against rock, against um, ice types. Snorlax will deal with it because of the superpower. And as Snorlax does not like fighting types, which Crobat deals with ease. And this time they didn't shield the they didn't shield the earthquake um, bait. Uh, yeah, ice sphere bait. So. We're just gonna let go of the first body slam and then try to go for a dragon claw bait um, as well because we need to get shields out of the way. If we get the first shield, then we're gonna try and go for another bait potentially, but we have to expand our second shield. But because they didn't throw at all before we threw our second charge move, we decided to just go for a blast burn because most probably they're not gonna shield, they're gonna keep it for the crow bat at that point, right? Because the only reason why they want to over farm is most probably to double up and here I was contemplating whether or not I wanted to go another wing attack to get to a blast burn but then again I thought that maybe they would try to throw immediately and here they did because they do not want to take any more damage from the Charizard and here they brought in the Galate which the Sylveon will take out with ease and because the last one is Crobat, it's very low. Uh, Sylveon can take it out as well, or we can just let it and let the Crobat take out the Sylveon, and then Warren can just finish the job with an Icicle Sphere. So, if you like this video, um, do drop a like, a comment, whatever, whatever you think about the video, good, bad, I want to know. So, yeah, hopefully. Um, Next week is um, Master League Premier Classic, so hopefully I have a video up for that. And thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.